Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us today. Medical research, where we try to find cures and develop vaccines or different diseases and whatnot, it's not an inexpensive undertaking. Many diseases are portrayed in the media as something that requires an immediate call to action. We are inundated with the information about certain diseases, and there are other diseases where the media doesn't cover them quite as much. This poses quite a problem when it comes to funding for uh, research and development into cures and vaccines. Our guest in studio today is here to talk with us about some of the obstacles that are faced when uh, one is trying to, to raise funds. Dr. Nina Anderson, Executive Director of Tova Community Health Incorporated, and her aim is to build capacity for a community-based health center dedicated to providing the highest quality of care for people who live with chronic medical conditions such as sickle cell disease. And her mission is to basically provide a holistic care and service facility for our clients uh, where they can achieve optimal health outcomes. Uh, how are you doing today, Dr. Anderson? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, you were here before talking about uh, sickle cell and some other diseases that you and Tova Community Health Incorporated were battling against. You're here today to talk about another aspect of the research that you're involved in, that being fundraising. Uh, as I stated, uh, it's no small uh, financial endeavor to do research to try and find a cure to not only sickle cell, uh, but many other diseases as well. And you're here today to talk about some of the obstacles that make it difficult for funding to occur. Yes. So uh, my uh, background is in public health, and I look at populations and try to find ways to improve health outcomes. So I am. I, I don't do basic science research where I'm in the lab um, yeah. trying to find a cure or a new disease-modifying therapy. But what I do is I look at data, looking at cost of care, and to find better ways and better models of care um, to improve health outcomes, keeping patients out of the hospital and trying to... Um, move them more into outpatient care, community-based care, um, to improve their overall quality of life. Okay, so now that you've made me understand exactly what you're involved in, and our listeners as well, even that portion of um, trying to improve the outcome of a medical procedure for all patients is costly mm -hmm. in itself. Yeah. That, even that's costly, just trying to find better ways of uh, offering care, not necessarily a cure. Yes. So... Is that aspect even more difficult to locate funding for than actual research into cures and uh, vaccines? I would say um, for sickle cell disease, because it's considered an orphan disease, um, and that means that it impacts less than 200,000 people in the United States. Um, for any investigator, it's very difficult to find funding uh, to, if they have a prototype or they're interested in developing a disease-modifying therapy or finding a universal cure for sickle cell, trying to procure funds is um, very challenging. Um, and I don't know if you're aware of, but the NIH has been reducing that amount of funding uh, yeah. for research and development in general um, for all kinds of chronic yeah. and medical conditions. So it's more competitive mm -hmm. to get a grant. And it's much more difficult for investigators to find those partnerships with pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. academic institutions to, to do the work that they, um, you know, want mm -hmm. to do to improve the quality of life for a specific patient population. So basically, any, what, as you term an orphan disease, any orphan disease is going to be a disease where it's determined that not enough people suffer from it in order to basically get funding. I guess it's prioritized sort of a, a disease triage, as it were, when it comes to funding and basically even just paying attention to that disease in the different media outlets. And those are the outlets that are going to uh, raise awareness in the minds of those who would be funding the research, right? Yes, that's correct. I mean, if you think about HIV or hepatitis C that affects millions of people, you're going to have more support from pharmaceutical companies and industries because there's a large, uh, there's a better return on investment than a disease that impacts less than 200,000 people. So they're looking at the numbers and 
um, how they can maximize their profit margins um, from investing into a new treatment or a new um, disease-modifying therapy. Okay, so basically follow the money, and uh, <laughs> there you'll find yeah. <laughs> you'll find the uh, the problem. Now, you've been involved, yeah. uh, Tova, you yourself and your team at Tova Community Health Incorporated. Uh, where Where is Tova located? We're in Wilmington, Delaware, mm-hmm. um, which is a, one of the smaller states in the United States. And um, that being said, our population uh, for people living with sickle cell disease is even smaller than mm-hmm. some of the other bigger states like Pennsylvania and in New York. Uh, we estimate about 700 to 720 adults and children live with sickle cell in our state of Delaware. Mm. And, and that's a relatively small number compared to, as mm-hmm. you say, some of the other. Now, um, are some of these other larger areas with a larger uh, population of those suffering from sickle cell, are they finding any better uh, funding uh, or is it pretty much the same across the board, no matter how large the population is, if it's determined that this disease is an orphan disease? It's, it's, it's pretty much across the board, across mm-hmm. the state. You know, even though I came from a state of Pennsylvania where the population of people with sickle cell was around seven to 8,000 mm-hmm. people, um, we still had challenges of finding funding um, for our center and to um, be able to participate in clinical trials mm-hmm. and to fund the comprehensive treatment centers. So it doesn't really have anything to do with um, individual states. It's, a, it's a, a national problem. Now, I was about to talk about some of the things that Tova Community uh, Health Incorporated has been involved in to kind of uh, work around the problems of finding funding, uh, one of which being a 5K walk and run that was held uh, back in September. Even putting on a 5K walk and run, it doesn't happen for free. So you're basically having to spend money in order to uh, raise awareness and thereby raise money. Is that uh, correct? Yes. It's, mm-hmm. it's a very, it's always a challenge. And this is our fourth year of doing mm-hmm. it to raise money from the private sector and corporations as well as uh, the public sector. Um, what's very interesting about our mission is, and the population in which we serve is that we never turn anybody away, uh, regardless of their ability to pay. So that also puts another challenge to mm-hmm. make sure that we get the numbers of people out to really increase the awareness of sickle cell and people in the community to know the work that we're doing at October Community Health. So it is a much, a very much of a challenge for my team to try to put on even just a 5K walk run. Mm-hmm. Now, what is uh, just a a ballpark figure when it comes to putting on a 5K walk and run uh, in support of raising awareness and um, getting donations in the door for a cause such as sickle cell? What are we talking about as far as cost uh, that comes out of uh, the the promoter's uh, pockets? For between marketing, Mm -hmm. I mean, using a race management company to all of the amenities that you will have at the event. Uh, we have to put out between ten to twelve thousand wow. dollars just to put on the event. Wow! And um, normally, once uh, all is said and done, and um, all the the votes are in, uh, are you <laughs> are you breaking even, or maybe is there a, a one or two percent gain as far as uh, funding, or is it normally a break even well, situation? Well, when I first started this, our first year, our goal was just to break even. And um, being in our fourth year now, um, we usually net, and this year we netted about $5,000. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's after all of the um, all of the fees were paid to the park and to the race management company, the insurance that we had to provide for each individual who participated. So it's very labor intensive, as you were saying. Um, but our goal, again, is just to try to replenish the amount of money that we had the previous year and try to at least increase the amount we raised by 5 to 10%, um, which is very nominal compared to other bigger organizations. But again, um, we it's very challenging uh, to get uh, sickle cell mm-hmm. into larger media outlets and bigger companies and sponsors because we're so small yeah. and we don't have those um that ability at this point in time. Now, as we wrap up this segment, uh, Dr. Anderson, 
let some of our listeners who may be totally unaware uh, of what goes on when it comes to fundraising, many of which, um, you know, they're at the at the forefront of their specialty, performing procedures and using new technologies and basically maybe oblivious to all that goes on just to, you know, get that piece of equipment or that uh, new white paper into their hands to perform that procedure. How do private organizations uh, raise funds versus the ways in which corporate organizations that have many more um, avenues raise funds? Well, well so I can just say for some of the bigger uh, nonprofit organizations, um, there's usually a few big corporate sponsors that mm-hmm. help, to, uh, or I would say they're title sponsors, that help to uh, very much provide a lot of the resources for the event. And also because sickle cell, at least in the state of Delaware, is one of those chronic diseases that you don't hear much about, you have to build, you know, that base of people and people in the community to get to know you and develop relationships with people for them to uh, have an interest in supporting okay. uh, what we do. So, um, as I say, I... I and I don't, you know, like I said, other bigger um, organizations, they have, you know, corporate sponsors that will help support them and also their media outlets and their uh, base of people that they can reach into is much different than mine because mm-hmm. uh, we don't have the resources that hire, you know, a grant writer or an event coordinator. We have to sort of be a one-stop shop. Mm-hmm. Right. So basically you're... Uh, uh raising awareness and then cultivating that trust, that relationship in order to um, peak interest, thereby, uh, I guess, loosening the, the purse strings of those who, you know, have the ability to fund such research. That's correct. I think, you know, moving forward, um, as we had shared last time, crowdfunding, sort of being able to raise monetary contributions from a large group of people, um, is something that we were successful in, and, and pre- I think we raised about twenty five hundred dollars mm-hmm. just off of our our marketing through our website and our Facebook uh, page, and so that was very helpful. The other thing is just really uh, making sure that we um, continue to thank all of our supporters um, because the average donation that was made to our organization for the race was just twenty dollars. But at the end we raised eighteen thousand. Mm-hmm. So there's power in small contributions that people make. So it's not necessarily the large contributions from big corporations. It's mm-hmm. small people giving small amounts of money and just constantly being very grateful for if it's a five dollar contribution mm-hmm. or a dollar contribution or a twenty, you know, that does add up. Absolutely, absolutely. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. We've been in studio today talking with Dr. Nina Anderson, Executive Director of Tova Community Health Incorporated in uh, Wilmington, Delaware, whose aim it is to build capacity for a community-based health care center dedicated to providing the highest quality of care for people who are living with chronic medical conditions such as sickle cell disease. And we've been here uh, talking about some of the obstacles that uh, arise when trying to, to raise funds for certain uh, orphan diseases, those diseases that are deemed uh, not to be uh, suffered by enough people in order to um, fund them on, on such large uh, levels such as HIV or, or even uh, several cancer researches. Uh, now, uh, as Executive Director of Tova Community Health, uh, Dr. Anderson is here uh, basically raising awareness for the lack of funding and the need for funding into sickle cell uh, disease. It's been great having you here with us today, Dr. Anderson. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. (laughs) Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes.